Scraping data properly opens up an entire new twist to dealing with large language models. Like you can say, what is the best programming computer for under $700? But I also want the computer to be at my local store. The LLM will go out, find the best deal available with the correct specs, and better yet, it will use the local data we scrape to help make the best choice available. By the way, this is all entirely possible, and the app we're going to build will do everything for us. It will automatically scrape the data using just a single API endpoint, populate the data into a semantic vector database, and now we can ask our personal LLM anything we want. This product is really awesome, and I cannot wait to show you how to build it. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over 10 years years of experience, and I've helped over 100,000 developers learn and grow within their craft. And just before we dive in, quick shout out to Scraper API for sponsoring this video. They're the ones who are allowing us to use that single API endpoint that scrapes any data we want. All right, so we already have an example project set up for us to be able to build this app. We already have our clients, which is going to be Chroma Client Pi. Now, this is a database that allows us to be able to do semantic searches. This is called a vector database, and it's going to be just running inside our project. So if you're familiar with things like SQLite or anything like that, that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. We're collecting this vector database, and the only difference with this is we are going to be using OpenAI for our embedding function, which means we need to use OpenAI to embed every search query or everything that we scrape to make it so a user can do semantic searches. The next thing we're gonna do is just add our OpenAI client for A, the embedded semantic search, and B, for us to be able to talk to some kind of chat bot that's gonna be using our data. We have a single model, which we're gonna be using, which is gonna be our question, so we can talk to our LLM about the data we're populating. And then we just have two more files, which is our scrape, which is gonna be scraping all the data and then our services, which is going to be using Scraper API to fetch that data. And the really cool thing about Scraper API, that data is gonna be returned as a JSON. So we can always make sure that our data is super easy to use and it's gonna be already like configured for us to go through it and populate it to our AI. And since we already have our Fast API app set up with our route included, we can just head over to our route and just start writing our endpoint right here. Now, the first thing you're going to see here is this right here, base URL. Inside our .env file, which is right here, we have three items. One is gonna be the base URL, which in this project is gonna be walmart.com. Two, we have our Scraper API API key, which you can get for free by going over into scraperapi.com and just registering for a free trial. And like I've mentioned before, Scraper API is my favorite way to scrape data. And then third, we have our OpenAI API key, which you can get from openai.com. Now, let's go ahead and just create our endpoints. The first thing we are going to do here is add a new endpoint called Scrape. This is gonna scrape the data for us. The function is gonna be called scrape data. Then we're gonna be using our search URL, which is our base URL, which is gonna be our walmart.com. And we are doing a search off a query parameter. That's what the Q stands for, for computers and where the brand is Dell. And this URL right here is all created by Walmart. So if you go to like walmart.com and you add a filter and you search, you're gonna see this URL, walmart.com plus this. And we only want to search for computers and a Dell brand as of right now. We're then going to be scraping their search results, which is going to be a handy way for us to see it in the terminal. Our response is going to be calling our fetch scraper API, which is right here. And this is again where we have our API key, which is our API key, which we're fetching right here from our .env file. And then we have our URL premium, ultra premium output format and auto parse the true. We scrape our data using scraper API, and then we return that response. So, so far, this is pretty easy and it's very straightforward. And then we have our data and we're just gonna do JSON loads the response text. And then at the very end of this, since we're saying scraping search results, let's just print that the search results are complete. Well, since we have that now, what we can do is go ahead and loop through each item inside our data. So we can start by just saying for item in our data dot get items. If the item brand is equal to Dell, which we know it is because right here, we're already searching for Dell and the number of reviews is greater than zero. That's really important. We wanna make sure that each product that we're scraping has a review. We don't wanna be asking the LLM 
questions about certain computers if there is no details or extra metadata from reviews from real life users. So we want to make sure that, hey, they have at least one review that we can grab this data from. Then we want to grab the product ID because we want to search and scrape the data again to make sure that we can get all the data about that specific product. And if not, we want to just continue on and just move on without that product. Now, when scraping data, we need to be able to extract the product ID from the URL. So in the URL that we get back from Walmart, there's going to be a string and it's going to have a condition group, maybe. And that condition group is different types, like is the product refurbished, is it an open box? There's a couple of different ideas. So inside our services, right under our Fetch Scraper API, let's go ahead and create a new endpoint that is going to be extract product ID from the URL. Here we're doing some crazy stuff, which is A, grabbing just the numbers out of the URL based on a certain part of the URL. And the second is going to be the condition group. So we are going to be grabbing the condition group, which is going to be like, hey, is it refurbished or not, which is an optional parameter. And if we have a match, we're just going to grab the condition group and the product group and then return it back to us. So now we're going to have our product ID. And now what we want to do is just add a little bit more data here. And this data is gonna look like a lot of code, but we're gonna walk through everything. First thing we're gonna do now is scrape each product. So we can see right here that we are going to be grabbing each product out of our list and search based on that ID to walmart.com. We're then gonna be checking two different conditions right here. Hey, does it have a product ID? Yes, but does it also have a condition ID? Because those are gonna be two different endpoints we need to call. If it has a condition ID, we wanna add it to the URL. If not, we just wanna end at our product ID. But if product ID is a tuple, well then we need to extract the condition code and the base ID out. And that's why we say base ID and condition code. If it is not a tuple and we just return like the string because it didn't have a condition code, well then we can just pass it in right here as a product ID. So then once we get our URL, we can go ahead and extract the ID out again for our vector database. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. We're doing the exact same thing. Hey, is it a tuple? If it is, let's go ahead and grab the elements out. If it's not a tuple, we can just go string our product ID. We are going to again, fetch our scraper API based on the URL, which is either gonna be this product or this one. And then again, we're just going to grab our review data, get all of our reviews, and then continue on. Well, after we get all of the reviews from that specific product, what we want to do is we want to combine all of these products into something called combined reviews. And that's because when we save it to a vector database, we want this to be a semantic search. So we want everything just to be kind of tightly coupled, but we also want our own naming convention. We might like want a title with a review, with a user. We need to create our own little bit of uniqueness so we can use the vector database a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and jump into our scrape service and let's go ahead and just add this format reviews where we pass in a list of reviews and now we're just going to join everything. We're just going to have the title, the review, and the overall rating. We're going to do something very similar with the document text. So now we can just come back into here, create a new function of format document text where we pass in an item, review data, combined reviews, and now we can create our own little unique item right here that we're going to save into our vector database, which is going to have our product, our price, overall rating, and reviews. And then lastly, we need to build the metadata which is gonna look very similar to our other items, right? Where we're gonna have product ID, product name, price and rating. And this will make so much more sense once we add it to our database. So right here, we can see that we are doing our ad, we're adding our document, our metadata and our IDs. Once we have that, we can see that it's stored in the database. And once it's stored in the database, we want a way to retrieve it. So we can just go back into our routes, say new route, and we are going to name this fetch.py. This is simply a way for us to be able to fetch all the data out of our database, where we're gonna call this fetch data. This returns all the data from our Chroma DB collection. And we're just gonna grab all the data that we just zipped up right there. So let's just hop into our main.py file and let's add it right here. Let's go ahead and open up our terminal and let's say fast API run app slash main.py. And what we can do now is if we say fetch data, try it out, execute, we can see that nothing comes back. However, if we come over here and we say scrape data, execute, it's going to scrape all of the data from walmart.com based on computers and Dell. And then we're gonna populate it into our embedded vector database. So we can see right here that we automatically created our Chroma DB when we ran our application and it's going through all the data right now. It scraped all the search results, it found items, it was complete with the search results, 
So we have a list of all the IDs, and now we're gonna be scraping and grabbing all the data for each ID. So we have the IDs right here, and then we have a condition group if needed. Right here is just an ID, no condition group. And now we're scraping all the reviews and the product information and saving it to our database. All right, so now that it's done, what we can do is we can jump over to our fetch all data. And this fetches all the data in our Chroma DB vector database. And if we click execute, we can see right here that we got 34 items, all with IDs, ratings, price, product name, and product IDs. And we can just see a whole bunch of different data. But how we have it structured is we have an ID, a metadata, which is the product name, product ID, rating, price, and then our document is gonna include all of the description about the product and all of its reviews. So now in the vector database, we can do semantic searches like what is the best computer for programming, and it'll be able to identify our specific needs and be able to find matches inside our vector database, which is really, really powerful stuff. But let's go ahead and add the implementation for us to be able to ask questions to our vector database. So what I'm gonna do here is jump into my routes and say new file where I'm gonna say ask.py where we're gonna import all of this information. And inside here, we're gonna add a services.ask service and a utils.prompt just in a second. What we wanna do is implement this endpoint now of slash ask, which takes in a result of our collection of queries. So everything from our Chroma DB vector database, we just wanna find the five results that we think match the best. And that's what we're gonna try and summarize and provide back to the user. We're gonna have our entries, which is gonna be equal to an empty list. We're gonna grab all of this data from our vector database. We're going to create contacts and join it all together, find the best prompt that we can give to our UI, and then we're going to say what model to use to respond back with. So the first thing we want to do is just create this format entry. So let's jump into our services. We're going to say new file, ask underscore service.py. Add that in here. We're just going to return the format entry. And then the last thing we wanna do is create this prompt. And that's gonna be the prompt that we pass into the LLM. We don't need a user to specify the prompt. We can just provide one for us. So I think the best way to do this is create a new folder called util. And then inside here, we're gonna have prompt.py. And inside here, we're gonna have build product advisor prompt, which is just gonna tell the LLM, you are a helpful product advisor. Use the following reviews and metadata to answer the customer's question where we're gonna pass in a contacts and question. So with that data right here, we can go ahead and just jump back into our terminal, restart up our application. Actually, we need to jump into our main.py first. Almost forgot to do this. We need to register our new endpoint. Now we can go ahead and rerun our application, jump back into our docs. I'm gonna to refresh to get this new ask product question where we can say, what is the best computer for under $600? And we're gonna execute. So what it's gonna do is gonna do semantic search on our vector database, find the match and review and return us information. So we can see that it's gonna tell us the best computer for under 600 from the options provided is gonna be this Dell Optiplux 740 for, but it's only $188. Wow, Walmart has great deals. So if we go over here and we just search for this computer, we can see it right here for $188, which is a great, great deal. But it would be really nice if we had some kind of UI with our application. So we don't have to rely on calling the fast API docs. So I'm just gonna add a quick UI right here in the app, right here, just call it a new folder. I'm just gonna name it UI. And inside this UI, we're just gonna say new file and we're gonna call this streamlit, streamlit underscore app dot pi. We're just going to add in some data here. So right here, we're just doing streamlet to create a quick and fancy and nice and modern UI for our application, where we're just going to be calling our local host port 8000, which is going to be our fast API application that's doing all of this behind the scenes. So what we need to do here is just open up a new terminal where inside here, we can just CD into our app and then CD into UI where we can say streamlet space run and here we need to say what our app is so streamlit run streamlit underscore app dot pi all right let's go back into our browser i am going to grab our new url which is going to be sitting at 8501 but our 
8,000 Fast API app is still running in the background. So we can ask it really anything. We're gonna say which PC has the best reviews for under $1,000? And we can just send it right here. Now it's running, it's asking and searching our vector database and it's gonna be returning some data. So right here for PCs under 1,000, this is the best computer generally with the best reviews. It has an overall rating of 4.33 and has among the highest listed products. Okay, so on this machine right here on this computer, what are the top reviews? So we're just now gonna ask it to show us the reviews that currently is sitting in here. So right here we can see the top reviews are great computer. Computer works great and everything was in good shape except my keyboard. It was missing a few buttons, but it does exactly what I need to do with a rating of four. This review highlights computer's great performance, overall good condition despite a minor issue with the keyboard. Now we can ask it a completely different question. Like, are there any affordable options for light gaming? Here we can see that it's gonna give us two options. It's gonna tell us this pre-built RGB gaming desktop computer and this, and this is all from that local scraped data. This is not just getting it from, you know, a couple years old. This is scraped data that is, you know, just specifically for you, telling us a couple different options. But we can see that they're both i5s. What if I said, are there any affordable options for light gaming, but I need it to be an i7? Let's see what happens here. Based on the product reviews, we can see there aren't any perfect for what we need, but it's telling us some other options, like this computer right here who has an i7. The rating's not great, but it is refurbished. Now, what if we just say which product would be best for someone who travels often? It's probably gonna give us some kind of laptop, I would think, um, than a desktop. And here we can see it's giving us a laptop computer, which is also available at this price point at the local store. I mean, this is really awesome stuff. This is what people are wanting from back-end software engineers today. Someone that can create unique solutions to um, an ever-growing you know, AI space. So this is really awesome. Hope you're able to learn something fantastic and I will see you in the next video.